Hey boys, welcome to my my top eight prediction video. So I've been I've been putting this off for a while now, but I'm just like uh, it's like what's the day today? What's the date? Like twenty twenty four. So like a week, I think it's a week. No, what is it? The third the third of March is the first round. So it's coming up very soon. I think it's next Thursday. Is it not? But yeah, it's coming up very soon. So what I wanted to do was this video is going to be a my my top eight prediction. I'll uh, list why I think they're going to be the top eight. And I'll also go through, like, the bottom eight just quickly. And because it's it's a bit interesting, I, I there is a fair bit I want to talk about um, around that six to, like, 12 spot. Um, it's very congested, in my opinion. But that's what this video is going to be. Hopefully, <laughs> it's probably going to go on a fair while, honestly. Um, I'll try to make it fairly short, shortish, but I'll probably ramble on. I mean, I've already rambled on a fair bit now, but... In the future, I've also, I'm going to try to be consistent and do like one video a week um, previewing the rounds and also doing my tips for, for every round. So that's that's the plan. That's the plan of attack. So let's get into it. So who do I think is going to win the minor premiership? I've actually got the Broncos. I'm tipping the Broncos too. Obviously, maybe a bit of bias coming in there. But I mean, I look at the Broncos side and it's just... It's just very good. It's just very, very good. Um, you know, they haven't really lost anyone of note other than Justin Hodges. Obviously, that's a big loss. But they were lucky enough to get James Roberts to replace him. Uh, very different players, but James Roberts is a freak. And he can do anything on his day. And just the fact that the Broncos... I mean, they exceeded expectations last year. And that was mainly due to the fact that Milford and Hunt were so dominant. So... Another year, uh, more time to gel. They're going to be a force, uh, you know, just a solid side. The only thing that could halt their progress for the minor premiership is origin time. But I'm looking at the side now, and it's mainly going to be forwards that are out. Obviously, with the Hunt and Milford um, origin ban, it actually works out for the Broncos not too badly. But they're actually not going to get affected too, too much. They're going to miss a few forwards, but yeah. So next up, we have the Storm. So... The storm is sort of just uh, a safe bet, really. It's like a, it's a yeah, very safe bet. I mean, they've just got a solid side. They got the big three, but then you look at the other players. Probably, uh, in my opinion, the best front rower, Jesse Bromwich. Uh, two very very good back rowers in Tohu Harris and Kevin Proctor, uh, internationals. And then you've obviously got Cameron Munster and a couple other, couple other young guys like Richard Kenna and. Tana Mapea, um, young outside backs who are pretty exciting. I mean, their team is just very, very good. And obviously, Slater is back. Um, I'm not actually too sure if he's like 100% fit. He probably still has a bit of a niggle, like in his shoulder. But the fact that he's back with Cameron Munster, you know, if they can stay injury-free, um, you know, they're going to get in the top eight for sure. But we'll see if they get the top four. I've got him for two, uh, second spot. Then number three, we got the Cowboys. And the Cowboys, pretty much like the Storm, they just got such a strong side. No real changes. I think they lost Tanganoa, which is a bit unfortunate. I think he's a pretty decent player, but other than that, it's just a, it's just a really good side. I mean, what else can you say? They, uh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, I expect them to finish top four, but I mean, they're definitely going to be in the top eight without question. Um, Thurston, amazing player. You know, if Thurston get inj it gets injured or something like that, who knows? They, I sort of feel like they could probably still make the top eight just if Thurston gets injured, but it would be a very tough ask. And then we move on to the Sharkies. I've actually got the Sharks um, at number four. Uh, so they're in the top four as well, in my opinion, because they've got a very, very strong side. As I'll actually go through their their changes because they've got a lot. They're one of the sides that have definitely um, got a lot of changes. So their ins are James Maloney, big in Chad Townsend, uh, Jesse Senalafeo, very good player, Jordan Drew from the Broncos, Josh Cleland from the Ipswich Jets, and Josh Cleland. I don't know if he will get a game or if he'll play much this season in the Haas, but he is an extremely good player. I really hope he does get a chance at. In the side, like in my opinion, I'm actually actually let's have a look at. I've I've sort of got two tabs open. I got the uh, 
the uh, transfers and also the expected team lineup. So let's have a look at the Sharks. Who have they got in the halves? Obviously Maloney 5'8 and Townsend 5 uh, halfback. Honestly, I would I would put Cleland in instead of Townsend, um, which might be a risk. I mean, Cleland's obviously a young player, but he's very good. He's um, yeah. I hope he gets a game because he's extremely good. Then we got Joseph Paulo from the Parramatta Eels, uh, very very strong player in my opinion. Uh, Kurt Cable from the Ipswich Jets as well, and Kurt Cable another one. If you guys haven't seen much of Kurt Cable. Um, another one I hope gets a game, or gets a fair bit of time with the Sharks, because he, he's, uh, he's very elusive, he's, he's a back rower, but he's, um, it's hard to explain, he's just a very good player, um, someone to watch out for, and then we got Matt McKilrick from the Roosters, and then the outs, they got a few outs, Michael Gordon, Ashford, uh, Josh Adokar, Jeff Robson, Kyle Stanley, Curtis Scott, so, I think their ins are better than the outs. I mean, Michael Gordon, um, they've got replacements. Okay, so I think I'm talking <laughs> I'm talking about the Sharks way too much, but the one interesting thing I wanted to bring up about the Sharks before I got off on a bit of a tangent is that I'm looking at the team, their expected team lineup, and they've got Jack Bird expected to play fullback, which is very strange. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't just put Valentine's Holmes at fullback or Ben Barber, because they got Ben Barber expected to play on the bench, I, I don't understand, I mean, I, Jack Bird, obviously a very good young player, but I, I feel like his best spot would be either 5'8 or in the centers, I just, he doesn't look like a fullback, he doesn't look like a natural fullback to me, but, you know, I could be mistaken, but I don't know why Valentine Holmes or Ben Barber wouldn't play there, I sort of feel like he's not going to play a fullback, I, I sort of feel like that'll be a change, but we'll see. So Sharks number four. Let's let's move on. Um, at fifth we have the Warriors. I mean the Warriors were so close to being in the top four for my tips, but uh, the sheer fact that it's the Warriors. You know every home game they got to travel a fair way. You know it takes it out of them. They struggle, but I mean they have the team to to beat anyone. Two of us check. Um, Isaac Luke. Uh, great forward pack, Sean Johnson, obviously. I'm looking at the team lineup, and they actually have uh, Lola here, expected to play in the centers, um, which, I, I don't know, I, I never really thought he played center, but a bit strange. But yeah, their side is very strong. Uh, arguably the best fullback in the game, one of the best halfbacks in the game, and in my opinion, the second best hooker in the game, Byron Cameron Smith. So yeah. Very strong side, and they've also got, I think, Bodine Thompson. He wasn't there last year, was he? I think he got signed this year, but yeah, he's a he just adds a bit more versatility and a bit more strike power in their forward pack, which is already pretty strong. I mean, look at their forward pack. Lilliman, Luke, Madalino, Ryan Hoffman, Bodine Thompson, Simon Mannering. Yeah, that's that's a strong that's a strong starting pack, honestly. That's that's good stuff. And then number six. We actually have the Manly Seagulls who have recruited exceptionally well. And this is a team where it could go wrong for them. But the thing with the, the Seagulls, which I put them into the top eight, um, even though they have heaps of changes, um, is the fact that they still have their core players. They still have um, their outside backs are pretty stable. You know, Stewart's still there, Mad Eye, um, George Tafua, those guys, Daily Cherry Evans. You know, their core players are still there, but they just they just have a lot of I'm trying to find their teams now. So obviously they're in Dylan Walker, Nate Miles, Tapao, Lewis Brown, Kerasia, Darcy Lusick, Tim Moulton. Okay, that's an interesting one. Moulton hasn't played. Feels like Moulton hasn't played in, in years, mate. But then we have Matt Parcell, uh, Nathan Green, John Walker, Tom Wright, and Goodall. Good <laughs> Fabian Goodall, okay. Um but yeah. Massive ins. They obviously lost Kieran Foran and Matt Ballon. Um, but let's just go through this. So their replacements. Kieran Foran's out, but they brought in Dylan Walker. Now, Dylan Walker, I'm not sure about 5'8". I would personally put Jamie Lyon there, but, you know, maybe Dylan Walker can cement a spot at 5'8". Uh, Matt Ballon, obviously a big loss. Um, very strong dummy half. 
but they brought in Kirisau and Matt Parcel. Both very exciting dummy halves. Honestly, I would have both these guys in the side. Whoever they start with doesn't matter, but I would definitely have one of them on the bench just for impact. I mean, Parcel is an absolute monster. Um, so quick. He's uh, I am I'm I'm ashamed, I'm sad that he left the Broncos. He's he's a definite uh, standout. He's a star for the future. But yeah, having two like really explosive hookers rather than a full 80 minute hooker, I think could work very well with the new interchange rule. And then you know they lost a few forwards, James Hass and Justin Horro, um, Willie Mason. Thank fuck. Um, <laughs> Jesse Senelafeo is definitely a big one they lost. They also lost Peter Hicku, I forgot about that, and Clint Gutherson. Peter Hicku, obviously a bit of a standout for them, but they've got the cover there. And the forwards, their forward pack is so much better this year. Obviously, to power and eight miles. Lewis Brown, I'm not the biggest fan, but, you know, he's versatile. Darcy Lussick, once again, I'm not a big fan, but, you know, he adds a bit, a bit of mongrel, a bit of, uh, a bit of impact. So, yeah, they've got a strong side. The Seagulls... People might have hoped they were going to go bad this year. They're not. They're going to be very strong, in my opinion. And then, oh boy, it was tough. The seven and eight spots, it was so tough. And I'll get to, like, the next four after the top eight, because the next four are, like, they were so close. But Roosters, I've actually got in seventh. Um, You know, it, it was tough. It was tough, but, I mean, I look at the, the, Roosters, the Roosters lineup, and obviously... They've got here that Hargraves and Boyd Cordner are going to miss uh, the early rounds, which is a big uh, big loss. But you look at their forward pack still, and it's uh, it's intimidating. Sam Moa, Jake Friend, Dylan Napa, Mitchell Orbison, Guerra, Isaac Liu, and then Taka Aho, Ian Henson, Kane Evans, and uh, got here Lalulawai, Vincent Lalulawai. So they, they got like two of their better forwards around, but they still got such an impressive forward pack, and their, ba uh, their back line is still pretty decent, I mean, it's 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 a tough one, it was so tough because obviously the Mitchell Pierce thing, they've got Jane Nukarima, Jackson Hastings to fill the spot, I mean, Nukarima is a talent, but we'll see how he handles NRL standard, obviously he played good in the uh, Challenge Cup, but it's a different kettle of fish in this, uh, in the NRL, it's, it's much tougher, um, but, you know, the back line is still tough. I mean, they got Blake Ferguson here lining up at fullback. I'm not sure that'll happen. I think Latrell Mitchell will actually play fullback, just my opinion. But we'll see. Uh, Daniel Tupu, Dale Copley from the Broncos, obviously. Like, he's a good player. And then Sean Kenny Dow. Like, they got a strong side still. I, I can't see them not making the eight. I really can't. They still they, they got too good a side. And then, rounding up the top eight, we have the Rabbitohs. Now, <laughs> this one... Just as tough as the Roosters, because it's funny because the Roosters are playing the Rabbitohs in the first round here, so yeah, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a big game. But I mean, obviously the big in Sam Burgess, um, but they also got Damian Cook, very very exciting dummy half. Um, did they get anyone else? They actually got Cody Walker. I'm looking at the lineup now. Cody Walker is expected to play at five eight because Luke Carey is suspended for round one and. People might think that's a big loss, but Cody Walker is, uh, he's very, very strong. He's a very good player. I think he will handle it, uh, I think he'll handle it amazingly. I actually, I think Cody Walker is probably a better player than Luke Carey, but, um, you know, NRL is obviously a bit of a leap up from Queensland Cup, but Cody Walker, uh, definitely an, a really good replacement. I mean, Greg Inglis still there, John Sutton, Sam Burgess, the Burgess, all the Burgess are there, fucking hell, um, Chris Gresmiel, they, they got a good forward pack, Adam Reynolds, obviously, they got a good back line, Kirsten Marvell, after being like out through suspension, is back, and I think he played a bit last year at the end, but hopefully he comes good, he was very good a couple of years ago when they won the grand final, so hopefully Arvell can... Uh, find some form like that again, but yeah, they, they just got a strong side, I couldn't... I, I think they'll win. I think on the back of Sam Burgess, I don't like to say it because Sam Burgess is hyped up to the extreme, but, you know, he is a very good player. He, I wouldn't say he would carry a team, but, man, he, he almost carries a team. But him and Inglis, I think, will fire this year. So, yeah. But then we have the next four, and this was, 
Like, I was tossing and turning, but I've got the Eels, Bulldogs, Raiders, Dragons. Not in any particular order, but all those four teams are a chance of making it, really. Um, the Dragons are probably the only team where I would say probably not, but the Raiders... I'm just having a look at the Raiders side here, and it's really good, um, honestly. They've got one of the best forward packs in the comp, in my opinion. Um, Paul Vaughan, Nua Salah, Josh Hodson, uh, Sia Soliola, Josh Papali, Sean Fensom. You know, a lot of impact there. And then Adam Clydesdale, Elliot Whitehead from the Super League. Um, I think he was an England international. So, man, the, the Raiders are poaching the Super League, which is... It's good to see Super League players come over here because there are definitely some good Super League players. Uh, Jeff Lima on the bench. Um, I think he... Did he play for the Rabbitohs last year or did he go back to the Super League? I know he, he originally played for the Storm and then he, he went to the Rabbits and he's been all over the shop. But good player. Shannon Boyd. They got a big, strong bench. I don't know. The Raiders could definitely sneak into the top eight. The Bulldogs. You know, the Bulldogs, uh, once again, they have a very strong forward pack. Um, I am a little... You know, their back line, in my opinion, isn't the greatest. Uh, I just... You know, they brought in Hopawade who I'm not a big fan of. Um, we'll see how Josh Reynolds and Mbai go together. That's the main question mark I have on them. Like, Mbai is a great player, in my opinion. Reynolds, not so much. I don't rate Reynolds really at all. Uh, hopefully, I don't offend too many people with that. Um, but yeah, I don't really rate Reynolds. I don't think he's that good. But they could gel. I mean, it's a different sort of a combo for them. So, I mean, they're, they're definitely a shot at making the top eight. It's going to be tough. And then the Eels. I mean, the Eels... I actually thought the Eels were going to be my top eight prediction, but I actually looked at their side, and I just... I actually don't think their team is that good. Um, you know, they got Michael Gordon at fullback now. Um, obviously, Michael Jennings into the centers. Clint Gutherson onto the wing now. Uh, Kieran Foran is obviously the biggest, biggest bonus for them, um, and he will, um, you know, he'll add a lot to the team, but honestly, I don't think Kieran, Kieran Foran has been that good the last couple of years, I like, I like Kieran Foran a lot, but the last couple of years, I don't know if it's been injury or what, but he just hasn't really impressed me too, too much in attack and stuff, his defense is always good, um, but then we look at their, their forward pack, it's okay, I mean, they brought in Bo Scott, who... Once again, I don't really rate very much at all. I know people like to talk up Bo Scott as like the hitman, but pretty much he only hits halfbacks and 5.8s, so I don't really consider him a hitman. He never does it to any forward. Um, you know, honestly, yeah, looking at the Eels side, I don't think they're going to do too well this year. I don't think they're going to do too well. And then the Dragons. The Dragons, um... Uh... They're, they're a funny one. They actually have a pretty good strong forward pack. Russell Packer is coming back for the Dragons. Um, and obviously, he's an aggressive um, forward. He's been in jail for a couple of years. Um, you know, Tyson Frizzell, to Joel Thompson, Leeson Armel, who I rate very highly, Mike Cooper. And then on the bench, we have Cray, Dynamis Louis, Will Matthews, Jack DeBellin. They have a really strong forward pack, but it's their backs, once again, which I... I don't know how they'll gel. Dugan apparently wants to play center for some reason. I, I don't know why. Um, Kurt Mann going to fullback. Uh, Kurt Mann I'm not a huge fan of, but he could surprise me. And then uh, the rest of them, Titans, Tigers, Knights, Panthers. So Titans, Tigers, Knights, obviously people will be like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. The Titans, okay, I am a Queenslander, so this is probably biased, but I think the Titans could do something this year. People probably laugh at me for that, but I, I, I think they have a decent side. Um, they got a strong forward pack. I think they have a decent back line. I don't think they're going to push for the top eight, but they definitely could be a bit of a roughy. Uh, the Panthers, people probably think, why have you got the Panthers so low? But I'm looking at their side, and obviously the news coming out recently is that... Who is it? What's his name? Matt Moylan. <laughs> That's right. He's going to be out for like a month. I mean, that's that's terrible for the Panthers straight away. Um, probably Peter Hickey will just slot back to fullback, which makes sense. I mean, they have a decent side, but... I don't know, the Panthers just can't seem to... Can't seem to click, so... They could... 
they actually looking at their side it's actually really strong but I just have my doubts about the Panthers um but I'm gonna change my mind a bit here I think the Panthers are definitely more of a chance than the Eels I'd put the Eels in this bottom four and I'll put the Panthers back up to like a chance of making the top eight looking at this side it's really good um I don't know I think it's pretty decent but we'll see out what happens and then obviously the Tigers fucking hell the Tigers are gonna struggle the Knights are gonna struggle um but yeah that's pretty much it I probably should have said this at the start, but everything I'd say, take it with a grain of salt. I know I'm probably, you know, making predictions and talking about players. Some people get offended and that sort of thing, but just take it, you know, don't take it too seriously. Obviously, I think all the players are good. They're playing NRL, but some are just better than others, so don't get offended if I talk shit about your team or something like that. But yeah, how long has this video gone on for fucking 20 minutes? Jesus, we gotta wrap this shit up, but yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and... I'll see you guys next time.